This video introduces the third and final part of our first unit. You have almost made it through. After this lesson, you'll be ready for the test that asks you to compare and contrast the political rights and economic activities of the three colonial regions. You've already learned about the three basic colonial regions. You understand the different roles of the apprentices, indentured servants, and enslaved people. And you probably have some ideas about how forced labor will lead to conflict as we go on through U.S. history. The conflict that is brewing during the colonial era is about freedom, but it's not really about slavery versus freedom. This is about people's political rights and freedoms. To start understanding the long struggle for political rights, we will take a quick look at this last part, the different types of government and the colonial colonies and who held the power. By the end of this video, you'll have an understanding of the big picture of, of political rights in the American colonies. First, we have four vocabulary words that you need to add to your notes. The first word is charter. This is a document from the king or queen giving a person or group permission to start a new colony. The next word is assembly. Assembly, a group of people who make and change laws for a government or organization. This is called an assembly. Now, there's various types of assemblies. It might be a congress a senate, a house of representatives, a parliament, a legislature, a house of burgesses. There's a lot of other names. So this is not a school assembly where there's somebody have, giving some kind of fun presentation or a behavior assembly um, talking about how you should behave. No, this is an assembly where it's the people. In this case, colonial assemblies were all men. Look kind of like this picture down here. And they made and changed laws. A representative, then, would be a person who might go to an assembly. So a person in government position who votes and speaks for other people, and not just for himself or herself, is a representative. Your representative is in Congress right now. So in the U.S. House of Representatives, Ron Estes is your representative. And Jerry Moran, Jer sorry, Jerry Moran is your senator. While senators are not called representatives, they still are representing you and the people of our district. The next word is proprietary colony. Sometimes the king gave one person permission to control a colony by himself. That man was called the proprietor, and it was a proprietary colony. So if you look at the word proprietary, it's pro, prefix, pri, yet, is like the root word. Don't actually know what this root word is. I didn't look it up, sorry. And then we have the suffix airy. So proprietary, a proprietary colony. Not a word you have to say a lot, but you do need to understand that a proprietary colony was controlled by one person chosen by the king. If you haven't done it yet, pause the video, flip over to your notes, and do put in the definitions and the examples. Before we jump into the types of government, let's do a quick review of the events that you probably have heard about already, um, things that you might have already learned about as well. So, in 1492, Christopher Columbus told Europe about the Americas. You might notice I didn't say Columbus discovered America. That's because millions of people already lived in the Americas and knew they were here. It was just that Europeans didn't know that Americas existed. About 100 years later, Jamestown was the first was founded in Virginia. This is the first lasting English colony. Only 12 years later, the first African slaves arrived in Jamestown. Slavery was already well established in the Spanish colonies in Latin America, so it was not a new idea. Sadly, slavery became part of life in the American colonies at about the same time that the slaveholding colonists became concerned with the idea of their own rights. The very next year, the House of Burgesses in Virginia met for the first time, and that's also the year that the Pilgrims wrote the Mayflower Compact. You're going to learn more about both of those, but those, both of those are about more people having political rights. The House of Burgesses was made up of white men who owned enslaved people, and until next unit, you will see that they became, sorry, in the next unit, you will see that they became one of the leading voices in crying out against the English king when they thought about their political rights were being taken away. For the next hundred years, other colonists were, other colonies were started until... In 1732, Georgia was the founded. It was the last of the 13 colonies that would become the United States. Fifty years later, 
the colonies would be independent, starting with the conflicts that start after the Nav Navigation Acts in 1763. So the Navigation Act said that the American colonies could only trade with England, which the people who were thinking about their own political rights start saying, wait, I don't like that idea. And so we begin the conflict of the American Revolution. This last part of the unit can be a little bit dry if you don't understand the big picture. We already talked about mercantilism, and that becomes important for understanding rights because different people have different expectations for the colonies. Remember the mother country, England, wanted more wealth and makes goods out of the raw materials from the colony, while the colonies export the raw materials to the mother country and pay tariffs or taxes on the imports. Think of the relationship like a family. The mother country is a parent, so we'll use the symbol of a king to represent England's government. That would make the colonies the children of the mother country. At first, the colonies needed the mother country to take care of them. Jamestown would not have lasted more than a year without food shipments from Mother England. The English Navy also protected the colonies from pirates and other European countries who wanted more colonies. So the colonies were happy to follow the rules set by King England's king and parliament because they kept them safe. They liked being part of the family. They understood their job was to make money for Mother England. Doing chores, helping pay the bills, those taxes, those are okay. That was their job. But as the colonies got older, they started to question why that was important. Kind of like middle schoolers question why their parents have certain rules. The mother country made rules about who the colonies could hang out with, who the colonies could trade with. They could only trade with the mother country and not their sibling col and their sibling colonies, but they could not trade with other countries. You can't hang out with somebody at the park, no. So the colonies started to question more. These rules were called the Navigation Acts. The colonies followed the rules, but some of them started smuggling a few goods to or from the other countries because they wanted a better price. Mother England was do busy doing lots of other things and didn't really pay a lot of attention to the smugglers. So the colonists weren't terribly unhappy that they paid some taxes when they imported goods but they started to feel a little unhappy, just a little. As you're taking notes and thinking about this lesson, pay attention to whether the king or the colonists have more power in each type of government. Sometimes the king took almost full control of a colony. Other times the king had very little direct control and chose to trust the leaders of the colony instead. The colonists really did think, well, they're far away and they don't really understand us. We'll just make our own rules and things are fine. We're still part of the we're still part of England. We'll still listen to the king, but he's far away. So you need to work with the classmates or let me know if you have questions about the notes. For some people, governments are easy and others understanding this part can be really difficult. Just understand it's all about who has power and ask if you have if you need help.